one God, one God and only one exists in three persons. Uh, again, my little mathematical equation, one times one times one times one is one. one. No matter how many ones you add, it's, it's one. Thus God, three beings, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and um, God the Father. I left him out of the deal. There's three and one. Um, so tonight, I'm going to finish up. My intent tonight is to finish that up. But as we finish up the scriptures in the New Testament, we're also going to dip in a little bit to... I was, I was trying to think of this, if you're listening to me the last, or if you're listening to me at any time, which is probably a, a test of your patience sometimes. Um, if you're listening to me at any time, especially when we're talking about something like this, the Trinity. As Christians, it's good to know what the Trinity is. It's good to know what you believe, right? Or to at least, as I told you when we started, pick, pick, pick it. Pick something, right? Decide what you believe, but pick something. And in that... But, if you, pick, if you decide, I believe in the Trinity, I believe in the Christianity, I believe in what I believe, I believe in God, I believe in this Bible, then in that, isn't there sometimes in your life that you begin to ask, but what's the point of it for me? Right? Are we not human? So what is the point of the Trinity? We are going to get into each section of what does the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and God the Son represent to us today. But in this closing of these scriptures, it's really hard not to dip into what the Holy Spirit really represents to us today. And I could say there's one word that really represents the Holy Spirit. Anybody want to take a shot at that one adjective that describes the Holy Spirit to us? Comforter. Yeah, I was thinking a little bit bigger, though. Pretty big one. Powerful? Yeah, but try, well, really where I'm going, you are, you, are, you are describing the words we'll use, but all of that encompassed into one thing is what? Oh, God the Spirit. No. Yeah. What I was looking for was everything. Yeah. <laughs> you see, when you really look at the function of the Holy Spirit in our lives, even prior to salvation, He is really everything. Mm -hmm. You know? He bring, I mean, we'll talk about that. So tonight, I want to finish up some scriptures if you've been following, but I'm also going to, if you will, talk a little bit about how, what role the Holy Spirit plays in our lives. And I want you to think of that selfishly, because even though he's directing and giving, it is the things that he gives to you. It is a personal relationship that you have. Um, I was thinking about this. When you pray to Jesus Christ, we pray, we, we get out and pray. <coughs> At that point, we're, we're asking for the Holy Spirit Right? Because mm -hmm. who did he leave with us? Spirit. Right. So the concept is sometimes, and maybe you haven't thought about this because I haven't, but sometimes have you ever stopped at lunch and just said a little prayer over, maybe it's just the meal, or have you ever just stopped to ask the Holy Spirit to continue with you during the day? Have you ever stopped in the evening and said, would you just continue to be with me? Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. you have to think, I'm already, I'm already, I was going to give you verses and then get into this, but I'll get into this because I, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit, right? So, because yeah. it's, I mean, you need to know, that you think you think of the Holy Spirit as a true person, mm -hmm. right? I know he's not a person standing here tangible, you're not touching him, but it is that kind of relationship that you have with the Holy Spirit. He is a real person and that, if you want to think of it from that sense, he's here for you. Mm -hmm. right? right? That's the awesome part. So let me try to stay in a little focus here and not roam around. So to finish up some scriptures that were in the New Testament that represented the, tr represented the Trinity, 2 Corinthians 13, 14 is one of those scriptures. Uh, again, this is Paul writing. In 2 Corinthians 13, 14, he said, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Again, what I'm trying to give you here is scriptures that, that represent directly all three entities are here for you. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. You can also look at Galatians 4 and verse 6. Galatians 4 and 6. It says, because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, or Father. Is that, is, and from a gender perspective, y'all do realize when the Bible was written, uh, son, 
was the priority to the family, not to be disrespectful to the ladies in the room, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But, so, but also, it's a, it's a um, oh, um, it was the way, it was the way things were written at that point, I guess I could put that, say it at this time, it was gender specific, but it wasn't necessarily intended as a, as a um, negativity, it was just the way it was written, right? But the, the first son was always the elder, always the, if you, I mean, if you follow that in the Bible, it was always that strong suit. That can be offensive it's, it's, in the 21st century. It was because, the inheritance line. Yes, it was. Well, that's what I was trying to say. Is it's, it's part of the inheritance, but that was your firstborn was, you know, the deal. But Scripture is written that way, right? It's because from it's Jewish perspective. Yes, and it's also written from the Hebrew uh, perspective as well. So, not to take anything away from that, but just just as a comment, when you see these words, "spirit of son." Part of uh, when it was son, it's still speaking to us as people, right? right? Well, because you know, Christ goes on to make it very clear that there's neither male nor female, you know, slave nor master, Greek, you know, it's right. No, that's well, yeah, absolutely. That's the correct answer I want to give, absolutely, in that passage and, and to the Bible, uh, just, just a point of reference. Um, anyway, back to, let me get back on track here, Ephesians 2. Verses 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. If you go on into Ephesians 4, that was Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And then Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, said there is one body, this is probably one of the uh, one of the better reconfirming the Godheads, if you will. Uh, Ephesians four, verse four through six. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, all Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. You get the idea of who God is. Mm -hmm. He's the man. Oh, oh. <laughs> See, it's not that hard. It really isn't. Now, uh, so that, that's a good passage. Again, now Colossians 1, if you're taking notes, Colossians 1, and I'm not going to read all of this, but Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 15 is another passage. Uh, again, uh, it shares the, the, the entity of three with it, uh, starting in verse 9. And again, I'm not going to read all of it, but 9 and 10 covers most of it. It says, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. That's Colossians chapter 1, and that's actually 9 and 10, but it also goes on to talk about what what's available to you and on, through, on down through 15. Colossians chapter 1, 9 through 15. Now speaking of Colossians, I, I did take a little bit of a rabbit trail here because why is Paul writing to Colossus? Anybody want to take a, give me an answer on that one? What's their big issue in Anybody know? Hmm. False teachers. No. This particular era is what they were struggling with was being too superior in wisdom. This is what he's actually writing to them about. Uh, there's a word for that. I'm trying to remember what the word is. Um, uh, oh, it starts with a G, but it did, it's a... Uh, um, Nostalgism? Nostalgism? Gnosticism? Gnosticism. That's what it is. Superior wisdom. This is what he's actually writing to them about. Um, and it's a good point to keep in mind is that seeking education, as we're doing tonight, learning more about the Bible, growing in your Bible, becoming uh, strong in your Bible, it's a great thing to do. But it was never intended for it to be something that you used or ruled over someone else with, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you grow in the wisdom of your Bible? 
relationship. Relationship, relationship with God. Absolutely, relationship. That's why I said earlier, now, now I'm going to venture off and take you down a trail of this Holy Spirit. Uh, but I want to share something with you first. We know that God is omnipotent. Everybody good with that? Meaning that he can do anything, anytime. He's omniscient, which knows that, that uh, there are no limitations to what he knows. This is very difficult for us in our finite world, right? But the one I really want to hammer in on tonight is he's omnipresent, <laughs> right? Okay, so what's the Trinity? Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy, Holy Spirit. Okay, this is the awesome part I got to play with this afternoon. In that, if God is omnipresent, who else is omnipresent? The other two. Why? They're one. They're one. Yeah. Okay. So when you think about the Holy Spirit, he left here with us in our lives. That means that every one of us have the Holy Spirit, right? right. So when you walk up to someone, have you, or let me rephrase that, have you ever walked up to someone and you felt that presence that you didn't have to know you could say, you're a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. What is that? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> Why is it not us? Huh? We don't know that. We don't know that. Spirit knows that. We don't no, know that. No, what I'm saying is that it's not us because it's him in us, correct? And him in them. And him in them. Mm -hmm. They recognize each other. See, in the presence of that, it's not, it's just something I want to point out because sometimes we say God is all, right? God is everywhere. Mm -hmm. But if we believe that God is the Trinity and God is Jesus Christ and God is the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit is present everywhere as well. <laughs> How can he move through a congregation? Do you sometimes visualize that as one Holy Spirit sweeping down through? True. But remember a few weeks ago when we talked about harmony in the church and harmony in your home and harmony in life? If you're in harmony with Christ and your spouse is in harmony with Christ and this church is in harmony with Christ, then that is one united Holy Spirit moving at one time. What is the power in that? It's not the massive Holy Spirit sweeping down through this building. We do pray for him to come down, right? Or to, But if you're in harmony with him, every one of you, if you want to call it this, are carrying a fragmented piece of that Holy Spirit with you at all times. And I don't mean he's fragmented like he's tiny or anything, but just he is omnipresent, correct? Mm -hmm. See the beauty of that? So when you walk up on somebody and you feel that spirit, what I want to say by that, it's not us, because how do we come to salvation? By grace. By grace. Grace is what? Free gift. Gift. Yeah. gift. That word's getting bigger for me all the time. <coughs> gift. It's a gift that he gave us. We can't earn it. We can't do anything with it. So the other gift that he gave us when he left was what? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He gives us that. That, like I said, to, to, um, it. I guess the more... The more you study, the more you dig, the more you learn, the more you create, the more you believe, the more you believe, the bigger it gets. It's kind of like eating a scallop, a red lobster. Can't get rid of it. Hate those things. Can't chew them up. They just get bigger in your mouth. That's how the Holy Spirit is in your life. Every time that you ask him, but what we have to realize is that he's right there all the time. It's just whether or not we reach out and charge to that. And I know we say this, we pray, and I think sometimes, maybe, maybe I'm the only one, you think you're praying to God, and you say, God, God, I'm praying to you, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. But really, you're praying right there at that point. You're praying to all three of those, mm -hmm. right? Because they're all in one. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is there. In that, that's why I asked you earlier, what does the Holy Spirit provide? Salvation. Salvation, thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Did you know that the Holy Spirit drives you, calls you, pulls you. That's that urge mm -hmm. that you have to come. Does it not say that no one comes to me through the Father, mm -hmm. right? But the Holy Spirit is that driving force that draws, us. draws you to Christ. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one for some people. Mm -hmm. It really is. But Jesus saves you. Jesus saves you. Holy Spirit pulls you. Holy Spirit's with you, right? No? Yes? 
<laughs> what I want to know is when Jesus Christ was praying when he was on earth, he was talking to God the Father, his uh -huh. Father. Uh -huh. And they sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. Right. You can't make one out of God is our creator. Jesus Christ is our Savior. The Holy Spirit is our guide and our friend. Absolutely. You can't put three in one sock and make a pair of shoes. <laughs> it can't be done. But they are one. Then how is Jesus Christ sitting on the right hand of God the Father? That, I don't, don't need <laughs> that I don't have the ability to tell you, but they are one. Well, I look at it as because they are spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's how they mm -hmm. can do it. Christ because they're spirit. Mm -hmm. You know. But it's still three in one, the same way as the same way, how could it not be in one? Because God is all. Because Jesus Christ is God's holy son. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he sent him down here to save the world. And I'm he in total agreement with you. Just on the right hand of God the Father. I'm in total agreement with you in one. I think, I think you uh, said it, we yeah. also have to remember that Christ was sent here in the form of a man for a purpose. And upon his death and resurrection, he assumed the same characteristics he had before he was sent here. Because he is not man now. He's no longer man. That is absolutely correct. Okay. <laughs> let me let me let me let me see if I can help you with or let me let me let me give this example. Okay. When resurrected. When Jesus Christ was on this earth, he went to Peter's house to heal his mother. -in -law. Well, the, no, the second time, the, the Peter's house, when they lowered down the, 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 uh, the paraplegic, the paraplegic right? Yeah. God, Jesus, I don't have the scripture in front of me, but Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did he do in that example? That you, you can't, what did he do in that example? He showed the power of God. Yeah. So he healed him. You, is that what you're getting at? He healed him? Is that, that what he healed him. He healed him, yeah. But what did he and physically do? And he forgave his do? sins. He forgave sins. Well, that's what he did first just about with everybody. I know, but here's the difference. When he was here, I'm trying to think of how to make this. He was 100% man, but he was 100% God. I, I'm not debating that. Okay. But what I'm saying in this example, what he, what he was able to do when he was here was to show actually physically that he had the power through God to heal sins. Yeah, that's why he performed miracles. He, well, he, well, not just that. Him. He brought him. He healed him. He picked him up. And at that point, there was, was no just, argument. That was because it showed his authority. It showed his. No, it showed God's authority well, through him. Through him. Okay. But through the man. At, that's the only when he did those miracles, he was able to give us the testimony that he had the power to heal. To alter physical reality. Um, <laughs> I'm not, here we go again. <laughs> I think I think you're trying to make my example bigger than what I'm saying. It was a uh, pretty big. I mean, it it was uh, no, that's not the word I'm looking for. It was a um, it was a PowerPoint presentation. Oh boy, was it right? <laughs> right. See, when you come down, to, if I come to you and say, "Do you believe in Jesus Christ?" Yes. By the word of God, by the word of God, I come to you and say, "You believe in Jesus Christ." Mm -hmm. You have to decide now whether you do or not because it's a salvation, right? It's a salvation. It's an act. But at that point, God could physically show, or Jesus could physically show, that he had the power to, to heal. Sin. Yeah. And it gave a physical presentation to the actual act of forgiving sins, correct? Mm -hmm. There was no debate. Well, that's what I'm saying. Now, they could, now the Pharisees said, we don't, we don't choose to believe you just like today, right? Yeah. right? But it was physically occurring right at that point. Right. You see what I'm saying? In that situation, in the day with him deal, that's where I come back to the fact that when you come to Christ now, you make the decision by faith to believe, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not physical. But you make that decision by faith to believe, but you become that change, that transformation, just as that man did when he healed him, when he picked him up off the ground that day. It was immediate right then, right? right? Immediately he healed him. He said, I forgive you of my sins. And if you go on to read the context, it says through God the Father. I believe is how it's, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But he gives the glory to God. But he gave them a physical representation of both salvation 
and the power of God and the authority all in one step. <coughs> and to me, that same situation today is when you come to Christ, if you truly come to Christ, then you truly seek Christ, correct? Mm -hmm. And if you truly seek Christ, then you truly change in your life. And if you truly change in your life, then are you not the same testimony? Well, that's where you decide, uh, I mean, that's where the fruit comes in, correct? Right. If we, if we, if we live the same life that we did before we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, where is the proof? Where is the desire is the yeah. word I'm looking for? Yeah, okay. Uh, there is none. Because everybody that I read in the Bible has ever come into God, ever come into contact with God of the Bible, or God, however you want to look at him, God of the universe, God of all, what's the normal situation that they come away with? They're either in awe, they're either in joy, they're either in heartbreak, they die, but something happens when you come into contact with God. Well, most of the time, anytime somebody comes in contact and realizes they are in the presence of the Lord, the first thing they're going to realize is how sinful and worthless they are. Can be, yes. yes. But, I mean, when you look at the stories like on the Mount Transfiguration or the different passages in the Bible, something occurs when you truly come into the presence of you God, bet. right? There's a reaction. Yeah. So here's yeah. my deal. If you, you say that you come into the if you say that you're a Christian and you say that you've come into the presence of God through salvation, yet there's no evidence, no desire that you want to study his Bible, come to church or pray or read or grow in the relationship. Did you really come into the power of God? Because something happened. Either you did not come into the presence of God or you don't realize what you're missing, what you need. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's my concern is that we have a lot of people that say they have come into the presence of God, but they have absolutely zero interest in growing, where I started a while ago, in the relationship, the relationship, that, that presence of growing in relationship with the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and God, God the Father. Mm -hmm. If there's no desire, where's the relationship? Because I can't find anything in here that says I came in the presence of God and I went, hmm, yeah, cool, got you, got you. No, something happens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even imagine that. That's the concern between an emotional reaction to salvation and reality of salvation. Like the young boy we had here a few weeks ago. He was tremendously upset, tremendously scared, tremendously worried. But there's been no physical response that we can see to his desire to come back. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When we ask him that night, take a few days. You seem emotional, but you don't seem spiritual. Mm -hmm. When you come into the presence, there should be a change, a desire in your life. I say that openly and boldly because if you don't feel that same desire, then I really need you to question the fact of whether you've really become a Christian. Mm -hmm. Because there should be a desire to want to have the relationship with your maker, whether you want to call it God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three and one, or three, three and three, there should be a reaction, a change, just like when that man got up, he said, I'm going to pick you up, I'll forgive you of your sins, stood him up, and sent him out the door. Mm -hmm. That's the same physical act that we have when we come to Christ, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, I have a, maybe a little bit of a different I'm shocked. aspect. <laughs> but, uh, I, I have to use my own self as an example because uh, it, as uh, accepting salvation at an early age, uh, the emotional part mm -hmm. was over with real fast. Right. You know, the uh, and then I started uh, uh, delving into the Bible and Scripture and reading and studying. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but I finally came to the point to where I realized at probably 55 years old that I knew a lot about God but my prayer life was almost none mm -hmm. and my relationship didn't grow at all even though hours and hours of reading the Bible and studying all sorts of commentary and everything else never got I kind of like when you first mentioned this evening about gaining all this knowledge in Colossians and that sort of thing, I find myself the same way. And until I started praying and asking God to talk to me, uh, that's when 
the the desire came in to, to do what he wanted. Okay. But my point to it is you can you did seek him. You bet. You see what I'm saying? What I'm referring to is people that never ever 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 either venture back through the door. They never pick up a Bible. The Holy Spirit's still present, right? You bet. He beckons, he calls. I mean, that used to be one of the things that I was afraid is what if the Holy, you know, the, the worst, let me rephrase this, the worst place to find yourself is when the Holy Spirit is not calling to you, even as a lost person. You know what I'm saying? Because we want to tiptoe out. We want to, oh, I'm going to go do this. I know this is wrong. And what I'm saying, and I want to get that one out of the room too, because I really get bored with the physical acts that we want to put sin on, and we miss, I, I keep telling you all this, we miss the ones that truly are uh, decrepit to you as a Christian, which is hate, jealousy, rage, Covered. greed, yeah. covetousness. We want to put it on the physical sins of alcohol and drugs and uh, porno and, and if physical. We, we rather hang on to those, right? Those, yeah, those are the things. But if you really look at what tears down a Christian are the ones that attack the heart attack the soul. These are physical. We're going to talk about this someday. I'm not preaching Sunday, but the circumstances of your life as opposed to your life. These are circumstantial issues of your life. You make decisions to, to drink and drive or to uh, get on drugs or whatever it is. The, those are circle. The, the reaction is that you're broken in here because you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because if you did, you would have peace. And in peace, you don't need to be numb to deal with the things that we face in life, which are everything that comes at us. Mm -hmm. It's like the passage that says, uh, really been hammering on this one lately, um, all, good, all things work to the good of those who love Christ. Mm -hmm. It's a pocket scripture. Mm -hmm. We yank it out. We whip that thing out. And we... <laughs> Can you? are called according to his purpose. Yeah. That's the but can you do everything in, in through God? With his help, I can. Mm. Mm. Okay. If it's his will. Uh, you ever met somebody that couldn't sing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so can you do all three things with God? Um, if God so no, makes it. Answer my question. Yes no question. Yes. Can you sing? Yes. You can sing. You may not like it. It may scare cats off. I don't, see, I don't want to scare you. I don't want to scare you. But when you pull that scripture out, yes, you can do all things through God, but you can't do everything. But sometimes God calls people that can't do something to do something he wants them to do. Not the baby. And that way they can't boast. Yep, that way he gets Good point. Glory. Good point. Yeah. He uses this for different things. Mm -hmm. But I am challenging you to think to about how you apply certain <laughs> things, how you pull out. It's Again, and I've used this with you before. We use it in sermons. We use it in teaching. We do it all the time. But sometimes you need the whole mm -hmm. entirety to understand the complexity. Yeah, well, the, uh, and the honesty not the year, and the direction you know? of where the scripture is going, correct? Uh, I mean, it's... Uh, but no, Bernie, I've heard you saying it's not that good. Uh, yeah, I, I know. There's a, lot, there's a lot of things you can do well. It's a joyful noise. It's a joyful noise. <laughs> but, you know, just... just but, the, the, but, but, but the before we went, we're already wondering off. I love this. The entire body... Where you were a while ago, I have, I have your notes, and I have this comment in here for just, for just for that type of purpose. What about the person who continues to study and 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 study, but there is no evidence of the spirit of love or Christ in them. a Pharisee or a Sadducee. But what are they really, what, 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 what I think, I'm just going to say it this way, what I really think that they're trying to do, so you can also study and become, you, there's lots of people who write books about the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Both from a history perspective, beautiful book, because this book puts it out there and says, you can go check me in history because it gives us names, dates. Mm -hmm. So you, go, you go check your other religions, go check uh, 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 Thomas's book. Go check uh, Buddhism. Go check. They don't put the. Go check the Quran. <laughs> when it said, like I said tonight, when it said that Peter, <coughs> they went to Peter's house. They give you names, right? Mm -hmm. And these names are trackable to history. There's two million lines of script that's in the, involved in this, so it's real. Mm -hmm. And it's it's puts anyway. I got the point. The point to it was there are a lot of people that study the scripture. But I often wonder, are they studying it to still see? They're still trying to prove that God is real. It's who he says he is. Yeah. 
this, I, I need to study this because I can't rationalize in my mind because, like I said Sunday, we think instead of we believe. Mm -hmm. So I do believe there's people that can spend a lot of time studying, but they're studying, and if you want to say subconsciously, they're really still trying to decide whether I want to believe or I believe this or not. So I keep studying and I become a theologian. I can quote all kinds of things. I can tie ancient Greece. I can speak Hebrew. I can dissect the words down to the 10th degree. And this is where I'm really burdened with all of this is that we can do all of this. But if we, as it said in, in, in Corinthians, if we have no love, <laughs> which means I have no spirit, <coughs> then we are nothing but a clanging bell, right? right. We're nothing. And that to me is where, please forgive me, but to some degree with all of the... Wow, get me in trouble. All of the acts of energy and enthusiasm and, and um, show and all of the stuff that the church has done the last hundred years, we're, we're you know, I, I, that's not taken away that there's not true Christians involved, but the show that we have now. How much was it focused on saving lives? Do we have love? Anatomy, yeah, is that love. the correct word? If you want to go to a big church, uh, Brother John was sharing, I'm not picking on your wife's church either, I'm sorry, I'm about to get in trouble. But it's a big church, right? And you can go, like Lake Fork was a big church, you can come in, sit down, get your worship on, go home, and go home, see? You did your, please forgive me, you did your hour. Now that's not to say everybody that comes there is not, they don't have a good walk with Christ, I'm not, I, that would not be for me to judge. But the overall outward appearance of where our world is today says something's wrong in the church, right? right. We're not getting it. Yeah. So I'm not anti-knowledge. I've been, all the whole time, I've been saying education, 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 educate yourself, strengthen yourself. But to have, that's what Paul was writing to Colossus, to have all of this and not have heart, not have passion, and not being willing to tell your brother or sister, not brother or sister in Christ, your brother and sister, this is the greatest gift I've ever had. I need you to tell you about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Then we missed the boat. We missed it. We absolutely missed it. We're, we're, we missed it. And I have to believe that as, as not just as our church, but as a church family, we're missing the boat because we have a lot of people going to church, but our world is still going to hell. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to transcend. You see what I'm saying? That's the burden I have. I'm, I'm all good with everything. All the structure, everything we have to do to keep everything running. But at the end of the day, it's whether or not I tell someone else what he's done for me. Right. I have that relationship. So I don't think your example is negative. I think you continued, you, you were continued to pull. Now, did you let other things get in front of you in that? Oh, sure. I don't know, 40-year gap? I did too, right? Yeah, sure. You know, I was born in the church, raised in the church. I know all about the church, but when I turned 18, I began to... Hey, hey, yeah, I know what. The question was, as we, and as I tell people, you put the foundation in them, right? You put the foundation in them now. And as all of us, I don't think there's any saints in here, then you wonder if they'd make it back. Because right. they all wonder at some point. If it wasn't, he wouldn't have said, there's no, not one, not righteous, no, not one. You know, as far as I know, in this group, I'm the closest thing to righteous that y'all have. <laughs> well, the humblest guy we'll raised for hand. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not raising my hand. <laughs> I was driving to Texarkana one night. I'll, I'll close with this. Um, I was driving, young years, 23, 24, I was riding to Texarkana one day to a paper mill, see the pattern, um, with a guy that was... Um, Antichrist, uh, and I don't mean he was the Antichrist, I just mean he was Antichrist. And every joke in the car from Dallas to about uh, New Boston was something about Jesus Christ to the point that, in, even at my young age, I was like, Whoo! So well, finally, I, know, I looked at that's what I, I looked at the guy and I said, Hey, Mark, um, man, I don't want to get all weird on you and everything, but could you knock off the Jesus Christ joke? Well, he may decide to take you out today and, you know, his aim be off a foot. I mean, we're saying, and I go with you. I'm just saying, if we could just, you know, when you have a presence and a knowledge of who he is, 
it should make you uncomfortable when you walk into a room when it's being it's it's blasphemous or it's it's negative, right? I mean, you should, and you do. I think. I mean, I think most of us now, when you turn on your television or you come into that circumstance, you you kind of have that little cringe, right? Like that's not who you were anymore. So you've been drawn, saved, and you've been given a direction to seek. And that's all I was trying to say earlier is that I do believe those are those are have come. We're, again, like you said, the fruit. We're the evidence of the salvation. Because when you come into contact with God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God in all, there's usually a change of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible clearly says that there is no fruit that's cut down and thrown into the fire. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah, what fire are you talking about? It does. So, in that tonight, I hope we didn't... I guess that was a little bit around everything. That does conclude. There, there are lots of scriptures that we covered in the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. Uh, and it, there's even more. With, that's just some of the main ones. Uh, but next week we will continue to talk about the Holy Spirit and then G Jesus and God as far as their their roles that they have have played or play in our lives. And then we'll, we'll wrap this section up unless there's questions. But uh, anyway, that's kind of where we're at on that. So. Hey, Tim, can I kind of throw something out here? Yeah. Uh, this last week, I've been I've been kind of looking over the, the scripture and, and reviewing where the Holy Spirit, throughout Jesus's life, was there, right there with him. I mean, there's many occasions where, you know, when they, when Jesus was baptized, uh, God the Father is well pleased, and here comes the Holy Spirit in the form of, of a dove. It, and I was always brought up that the Holy Spirit came upon man in that in the room when he where after Jesus went back and said. Well, he's going to, the comfort is going to come to you. By no means was that the case. The power of, of, uh, of Jesus was given by authority from heaven, which is God the Father. And even talking about in the sense of the gentleman who they, they lowered down, he said, pick up your mat and go. Of course, Jesus knew what was going, but Jesus had to ask for the power to heal that person. So you see God the Father, God the Son, and then that he invoked the Holy Spirit into this guy by cleaning his life up. And that, that person went and spoke to others uh, for that reason that, that God needed somebody to start going out and speaking to others about the, what was coming about. And I think when you, when you talk about us having some kind of wisdom, for me, wisdom comes when I read the Bible and I apply it to my life and when I ask to give me information from above it's always to his will I don't ask things in my will I ask them in his will so what that tells you is, is that complete uh, re revolution goes back and forth speaking to God he speaks to you I mean how many times have I, in my life can I say that I had a, a brother that was uh, in Christ that was having trouble and so I call that person up and then he says oh man I'm glad you called I just went through this and then you that's the spirit. And every one of us has that spirit. We just have to utilize the spirit. And here's the way to do it. We have to listen to it also. Exactly. Another way I could summarize it is sometimes when you're teaching a class or you're speaking or you're talking to somebody, they'll say, man, you were talking to me today. Well, it's not me. So I'm going to go back to where we were a while ago, that fragment of the spirit that lives within you. See, he knows what you need. He knows what I need. He knows, see, that's the whole point, is that it's not when, I probably didn't explain that well when I said that it's not us. It's not the physical person. Now, I'm not saying I'm speaking in tongues. I'm, I'm not going, but what I'm saying is that if I'm speaking this word from God, it's his word, not mine. That's why it has the power to inspire, the power to change, and the power to save. Not I, I could talk all day long, but without reference to or presenting of the holy power of God, and that's what's happened in some, I think in some circles, is that we've, we have decided not to teach or to preach directly from his word. His word was the whole point of the church. That's the whole failure the of the whole, church today. Well, it, it really is. It's it's it, that was one of the many comments I had in my notes tonight is that we we quit teaching it, and it's like anything else. Once you quit believing it, so you quit teaching it, you quit reading it, you quit believing it, 
and then you disobey it. You quit living it. Right? I don't There's think I could. I don't think I could go to a church that doesn't preach. You know, from mm -hmm. the word. I've I've been fortunate enough that. I haven't had to endure that. Or well, I'm working on lightening my sermons up to increase the crowd size. So <laughs> apparently, I'm being too hard on them. So. No, you're not. No, no, you're not. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something happened to me? Mm -hmm. The Spirit woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning one time and made me start praying for this lady. Two weeks later, I found out she was smothering to death. And my prayer helped her give her bread. Amen. Because the gospel, I have the souls of the Holy Spirit, pray for that woman. If you listen, he will tell you things that you need to know. He will. And that's, and that's the way I also ask people to remember is that it is a conviction, it's not a condemnation. Mm -hmm. right. He's trying to direct you. So if you really want to get like movie type mentality, do you think that he has guided you away from certain instances? Oh, oh yes, he has. See, when you look at the gifts, <laughs> I know he has. we're not getting, we're the gifts, if you start looking at the gifts, one of them is the, the gift of discernment, which says, I would really like to know if someone's lying to me or misleading me. That's one of the things that you, so you can pray, God, give me that discernment so that I know what's well, right? What's mm -hmm. good and bad. That it's not just so much that I'm here to, uh, often we interpret that as I need to go judge someone because I'm a Christian. I've read the Bible. So, Bobby, I need to come look at your life and tell you where you're messing up. And it's a long list. We don't have time tonight. but <laughs> <laughs> No, but with all sincerity, that discernment is, is talking to the Holy Spirit so that you have that wisdom. As John referred to, World wisdom is college degrees, high school, business, look at the success I made. Yes, that is smart people. I was, I mean, beautiful vocabularies, pronunciation, pronunciation, education, it's all well. But what he says in his Bible is to have, again, to have all of this and not have love, love Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. hmm? That's who he is. That's who God is, Jesus Christ, love, to not have him then you've not grown in wisdom. To grow in wisdom in God's eyes, which is your maker, is to grow in the wisdom of his Bible. Mm -hmm. Then you become wise. Mm -hmm. Wise unto God. So, you know, I, that's the best way I could put it. Uh, that's the wisdom that, John, you're talking about. That's the wisdom that we should be seeking. It's like, you know, uh, do you know the square root of pi? Not without a calculator. <laughs> do you know who God is? Yes. <laughs> and that's why it also says in the Bible that, uh, as you said earlier, uh, I was on the God can do all things through me. Cindy, you said so he sometimes uses people who can't to do. Yeah, he does. Why? Because he needs the willingness, as we talked about Sunday. The person who's willing is much more dangerous than the person who's educated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not right? the able, it's the yeah. willing. It's the yeah, willing. We can, because see, here's a group of words. We often say, "Hey, can you go do this?" I can't do that. Ninety-nine percent of the time, I'm convinced the word, the proper word that we should use in our lives, if we were going to be honest, is "I won't do that." I'm not talking about because most of the time we have the. Can you can you help me? I could, but if we say "I want," that's ugly, right? Well, he just wouldn't help me. So we say, "I can't." And we often address the, the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the same way as Miss uh, Pearl's talking about. He comes to me and says, I want you to do this. I want you to wake up and pray for this person. I want you to wake up and write this note down. I want you to go tell this person, I can't do that right now. i got to go to work. Man side, absolutely in agreement. i got to go to work. i got to be there. If I'm not at work today, I'm going to get fired. But see, it's the faith of God in you, right? Now, don't anybody get fired tomorrow and come back and tell me you got fired. But... <laughs> But if you have the faith, which comes, see, that's, that's the, I could go on all that, and it's already, it's 22. The, the, the spirit of the wrath of the Trinity is what that is. It's that Holy Spirit. It's God. It's Jesus Christ. Yes, it's all three of them, and you're enthused into them, interwoven in that strength that you have when you walk in Christ. That you can, that you're, that this physical, that like you said, Joe, in the prayer request, yes, the anxiety of this world right now. I leave you peace, not like peace of this world. What did he, what did he, I leave you peace, I leave you the Holy Spirit so that you can, when you're both like, man, Barb and I are the same place. When, when I'm at that point where just, you, you just can't take any more of this world. When I mean, you finally get down and you say, God, please, take it away. Take the, whoo, remind me 
of who I am so that I can remember who you are, so I can remember what I'm in right now mm -hmm. may seem like eternity, but it's not. That, that's what happened to me to, to this today. I, you know, there was just so much, you know, just bombarding. And, you know, I just didn't even feel like coming tonight because I was just so out of it and anxious and yes. overwhelmed. I said, no, that's exactly where you need to be. Well, that's, and that's what he wants because if he keep, what's that I'm saying? That if he keep you busy, you know what I'm saying? See, if you're not growing in Christ, you're, you're no threat. We know this. If you're not really trying, so are you going to get persecuted? Yeah. More than likely. Yeah. Is he going to pour it on that? Now, does it always come in the forms of, you know, disease and ill? No, it, sometimes it's just, like you said, it's boom, boom, look at yeah. this list. I need to get this list done. What, you know, it's just an hour. Okay, I, I, I can skip Wednesday night. I can skip, but what happens? Well, I can skip Sunday night. I can skip, so. How do I know that? Because I've been there, right? right? So easy. You just go, hey, you know what? I'm not going to go tonight. I'm make it up. I'm going to go Wednesday night. Yeah, something comes up. Isn't it funny how that works? Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you turn around, and it's been a month since you came or opened your Bible or even prayed, right? Mm -hmm. I work every morning. You know how hard it is sometimes to get up, get everything done, get packed, get on the road, got to be at the paper mill. And, oh, I, did you pray? Mm -hmm. See, it's all part of that busy part. Right. He can keep us busy. He can keep us inactive. Yeah. And what we don't totally keep our minds on is we still have that man part that that part I need to do all this stuff because this is the physical responsibility of my life when everything resides in the spirituality of knowing Jesus Christ right mm -hmm. but we still struggle with those two worlds all the time I need to eat and I need to grow mm -hmm. I need to fix the house I need to be here mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah. so anyway now we're way late so okay. God bless y'all Dear God, I come before you tonight. Thank you for this time. You know how much I love this volley, God. Uh, I love, I love that we we dig, we ask, we question. Uh, God is God that we have right answers. God is God that we have correct answers. Uh, and let us know as a church, God, this a church as it was in uh, for the first century, God, that we are growing and adding and talking and preaching and and witnessing, God, and growing in you. Thank you for all that you allow us. Remind us of your Holy Spirit. Again, I pray a hedge of protection on each person here tonight for health, wealth, uh, and just overall from this crazy country, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You are free to move.